Do you guys remember a video game called Silent Hill? Or even more so, a movie based off of the video game called Silent Hill. Well, did you know that the writers, the screenwriter of the movie, based the town Silent Hill off of a real life place? And that real life place is called Centralia, Pennsylvania, where in 1962, a mine fire was accidentally lit in the coal mines beneath the town. And it still burns to this day. Today, we're exploring this town, the real life Silent Hill. And doesn't Jessica kind of look like the grim Dora the Explorer? Hey. <laughs> got... saying I love childlike? No, you're just all dark and spooky. You got a backpack, you're carrying the drone. Don't make fun of me before I go to school. <laughs> it offsets my day. All right, be prepared. This is gonna be an interesting one. Now, like a cancer, it may cause the death of the town. The problem is a fire in a coal mine that's been burning now for 30 years. Many of the town's residents have moved away, but 61 others want to stay, battling not only the fire, but a government that wants them out. Alex Serkin has more. Our town is a shambles, folks we treasured have gone. The street seems deserted, we people so forlorn. This mine fire issue came from below, settled in burns the land, Centralia. It is Molly Dara's song of despair about Centralia, Pennsylvania, her home of 66 years. She is one of 84 residents living in this small town nestled in the heart of the state. For 30 years, nearly half of Molly's life, a coal mine fire has been raging under Centralia's streets. Its ominous presence is everywhere. A constant smolder of smoke rises from the ground. Boreholes monitoring the fire's temperature are all around. So are sinkholes, which occasionally open with no warning. The rotten egg smell of sulfur dioxide from the fire hangs in the air and is killing the trees. You would think people like Molly would want to leave and move far, far away, but that is not the case. Centralia's residents are fighting to stay in the place they call home. The state wants them to evacuate in the next two years. It claims they're in danger from the fire. Centralians say the blaze is moving away from their town, so there's no need to go. I couldn't give you one reason to leave, not one. Not one reason to leave, we have no problem. We have no gases. Like I said, if, if we had them, I'd be out of here. Right now we're walking the old Route 61 highway that used to lead into Centralia, but because of the heat and the fires, the, the street, the pavement started buckling and they had to shut it down. Now this, this highway then became known as Graffiti Highway, and you'll see why in just a minute here. And people would come out here and write different sayings and do all kinds of artwork. It was really cool. But over time, it became a problem. And then the state, I think it's the state, came out here and just dumped a whole bunch of piles of dirt on here. So you can still see the graffiti, but you can't get back to Centralia by walking this way. I'm sure you can. It's about almost a mile up the road. But this is it, how wild is that? We had heard that they had completely demolished the highway, that it had been you know, dug up and destroyed, but it looks as though the highway may be intact. They've just dumped big piles of sand, dirt, and rock. Uh, strategically, I'm not sure. I would have to look that up. Yeah, it's kind of hard to d determine why they did it this way. They should have yeah. just left it alone. Because there's, there's old photos, you can see that the highway had cracked and, you know.
Now, baby goal, before we go into Centralia, I have to tell you a few different things, words of caution. Okay, things you need to know. If you see steam or smoke coming up from the ground, don't go anywhere near it, don't breathe it, it's gonna be toxic gas. You don't want any part of that. If you see cracks in the pavement or in the ground or a sinkhole, get the hell away from it. Back in 1981, something happened here that, that put Centralia and the mine fires on a state level and a national level. There was, I think it was a 12 year old boy who was playing in the backyard with his brother when a sinkhole opened up underneath him, four feet wide and 150 feet deep and he fell down in it. His brother was able to save him, he saved his life. Very, uh, lucky. very, lucky. very lucky. They tested the fumes coming out of it and it was deadly levels of carbon monoxide. So when we're walking through here, be very careful. Supposedly, rumor is, there are places that if you stand long enough where the fire's closest to the surface, mm -hmm. your shoes will melt. I've heard that. So keep an eye out. We brought our drone with us. Its name is Ghostly Swoosh, so we're gonna fly it here in a little bit. We wanted to walk up the old graffiti highway a little bit and see. You can tell that people are still coming here and visit because the dates are current. I see a, a memorial over there for Kobe Bryant. Then right over here, there's one that says Free Joe Exotic. It's pretty wild. Looks like people have been back here setting fires, like little campfires or something. All kinds of messages here on the pavement and graffiti. One there that says, get rid of the dirt. Some of them are really hard to read. Now, like I said a little bit ago, this road, if I'm not mistaken, goes back like three quarter of a mile or almost a mile. We're not going to walk it. You can drive into the town of Centralia. There's not many people there. What's it say? There's an arrow that says, has a cute butt. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, I like that butt. <laughs> and there she goes exploring. Hey, come back here with that drone. As we go deeper into Centralia, you're gonna see that there are people still living there, but not many. Back in the day, the 60s, the 70s, and even the 80s, there were families living here. There were buildings. A lot of that has been torn down. I think in 2017, if I remember correctly, there were five residents still living here. And they're allowed to live here, but once they die, the land goes back to the state, I think it is. It is an eminent domain. I think that's what they call it. So there's only a few things that can be seen. I think the church is still there. We're gonna to try to find that. And there's the Odd Fellow Cemetery where they believe the fire originally started. We're gonna to try to find that and see some of the, the smokestacks, the, the pipes, the vents coming out of the ground. What's that? Big ones? I don't know how big they are. I think they're rather small, but they're like oh. the old rusted metal. So. It's pretty much a ghost town now, our kind of town. What you're looking at right now is one of the roads, one of the many roads through Centralia that's abandoned. There's nothing on it. Most of, if not all of the buildings are gone now. I was here 20 years ago and there were a few. Now there's even less and the streets are just vacant. I will say this though, as soon as we turned the corner into town, we saw the giant white church on the other side of town up on the hill. It's beautiful, it's massive. Just looking at this, you would think that there's a budding town right below it, down the hill, but there's nothing. Being here at the church, you can see the almost direct influence that this town has had on the movie because this looks quite similar to the chapel in the film where a very gruesome scene happens on its steps. If 
you're a fan of the movie, you know. Standing here at the base of the steps, there are three no trespassing signs. This is the biggest one. Notice, no trespassing, private property. This church, adjacent cemetery, and surrounding property are strictly for the use of parishioners, their family members, and guests attending services. Violators will be prosecuted, so we're not going not gonna to do that. Here's the second sign at the base of the steps, looking up at the church. And the third sign is right there above the wall. Now you can't see the cemetery from here, so I'm going to walk up the street and see if we can look inside it. Now I never remember if a cemetery is attached to a church, a churchyard, does that make it a graveyard? That's the difference, right? A graveyard is a cemetery, a plot of land that's connected to a church. And a cemetery is a plot of land devoted only to graves. I will say this though, I know this for sure. This is a beautiful day for a walk in this ghost town. Turned around for a second just to take a look at the church and look at that. It's massive. Now walking up the street, I was kind of hoping that we can get a good shot of the cemetery the graveyard but i'm not seeing anything so it's got to be back up over the hill i wonder where jessica's at she's out there exploring last time i saw her she was saving a caterpillar see what i mean every road here leads to nowhere it's dead the main street that runs through town is still active. It goes from one town to the next and it just completely bypasses Centralia. And just walking through, you can see old retaining walls, curbs, sidewalks. It's pretty wild. We're gonna do our best to try to find anything that we can of life that once was here, aside from the church. Right now, we're trying to find the Odd Fellow Cemetery where the fire is rumored to start. And I remember back in the day, there was like a little, little park in the center of town. It had a bench and a bell that said Centralia. So I'm hoping it's still there. It might not be, because it's been a long time. The views though, are something else. Look at this. Overlooking another abandoned street. Haven't driven down that one yet. I know because of the time of day we're visiting, it's a little hard to see with the sun, but just take a moment and look at both sides of the street, how it looks like there's a forest on each side of it. Now this, at the time of recording this, this is 2021, it's October, 2021. Now I'm gonna show you a photo of what this street looked like back in the early 80s. If I remember correctly, this photo is from 1983. That's how much has changed. It's mind blowing. We've been driving pretty much all throughout Centralia and haven't really seen anything aside from some graffiti and some retaining walls. We found the cemetery, it's right over there, the Oddfellow Cemetery where it is believed that the fire started now, Jessica, we're kind of standing in the middle of a crossroads. Yeah. Does it remind you of a video we did? Yeah. Back whenever we tracked down Robert Johnson, the grave and the, the crossroads where he supposedly sold his soul to the devil. Yeah. How fitting is it that there's crossroads that we're standing at right now and there's a fire that's been burning since 1962 below our feet? The ground isn't hot. We're gonna walk around, we're gonna walk through the cemetery over there and see if we can see any of the smoke coming out or at least some of the ventilation shafts that we've seen pictures of. It's definitely strange. A little eerie. Right, a little eerie. Yeah, but otherwise really clean cut. Jessica's already in the cemetery walking around. We read online that when the conditions are just right, and you're walking through the cemetery, you can see smoke coming out of the ground near the tombstones. 
So that's what she's looking for. I thought for a moment there, when I first stepped into the cemetery, I had smelled something faint, but the wind keeps changing. So I don't know if that was my imagination or if it's something that's nearby, but I don't see anything actually inside the cemetery. So the mine fires mm -hmm. underneath this town in this area, this region, one of the reasons why they ended up getting rid of everybody, um, you know, asking them to leave politely, and then once they pass away, they take the land. Right. Um, is because it's a labyrinth of mines underneath here, and it's still burning. Yeah, I think they estimated like for another two hundred years. You would never know just walking through here because it's so no. beautiful and peaceful. And everything is is well manicured too, so there's still people in the town taking care of the cemetery and things like that. And just a bit of sad history, you know, one of those odd occurrences. So the big question is, how did the mine fire start? Well, for years, the town, they were, what, burning garbage? Their landfill, yeah. Their landfill on one end of town. And then the time came, they moved the landfill to the other side of town and in preparation for a holiday, I think it was Memorial Day, yeah. uh, some volunteer firefighters were out burning the landfill all the junk, all the nastiness, getting rid, of, getting rid of it to make way for the holiday. And they thought the fire was out, and it wasn't. And eventually, the ground caved in, the fire got down into the mines. I thought somebody was standing over there, freaked me out for a second. I think it's a stack. No, yeah, so um, I read online about the, the they, they called them the devil stacks. And there's one straight ahead. I thought it was a person looking at me. It's a devil face. That's kind of cool. So let's go take a look at that. That's creepy. Yeah. Walking over this way, I can already smell it in the air. It's very faint. But there's a, a certain... Yeah, look at that. There's one right there on the right-hand side of the screen and one on the left-hand side of the screen. These are the old ventilation shafts. They call them the devil stacks. Look at this. Somebody painted on it. They wrote the road rattler. The devil with a pentagram on its face. And the word dark lord. Oh, wow. Now that's something else. So as I was saying, the firefighters, the volunteer firefighters were cleaning everything up and burning and they thought the fire was out and the ground eventually gave way. The fire was still burning, got down in the mines and it still burns to this day. I wanna touch it, I wanna touch it. Well, I mean, it's, it's warm, but I think it's just warm from the sun. Crazy, right? If I walk around, you can see how gnarly that fence is. Man, oh man. There's another ventilation shaft over here. I'm sorry, the devil's stack. Looks like the fence is in a lot better condition as well. Pretty wild. For the most part, I'm not smelling anything, like nothing burning, no toxic fumes. My shoes aren't melting. The sun is beating down though. I remember whenever I was here 20 years ago or so, uh, it was rather cold. And I do remember seeing smoke coming up from the ground in certain areas. And I was like, I'm not going over there. But this place is pretty cleaned up now. Pretty wild though. I come across our first cool pile and Jessica wants some cool to take home to put in our, our collection, the Grim Life Collective. It's so shiny. It is shiny. It's like, I would have thought it was a rock, not coal. Go ahead, pick a piece. Remember, we gotta take it back on the airplane. Oh yeah, airplane. 
So make it small. Did you find a piece? Mm -hmm. Ah, look at that. That's a nice one, about the size of your phone. Yeah, and it, it's shiny. Some of the pieces are super shiny. You would think that when you touch it, you'd get really dirty, like like charcoal you use when cooking, right? But no, it, it's very clean to touch. Now, one of the things that I find really interesting about exploring Centralia, if you do come here, there's a lot of dead end roads and a lot of dead end pathways, like man-made dirt roads, kind of like this one right here. Now, what's really cool about this is pretty much all of them have a dirt mound blocking access, which prevents you from driving on it. But you can park your car and you can go walk and overlook what it's blocking you from seeing. Usually it's something pretty darn amazing. For instance, look at this view. Now, just looking at it, do you see something that looks a little out of place? See in about the center of your screen, that white building? That's the church that overlooks Centralia. Everything around it, all those trees, that's where the town once stood. It's gone. Wild, right? Absolutely nothing. The town is gone. Erased. And aside from some cars on a highway off in the distance, so peaceful out here. You can see some windmills off on the distance. Over that way, that's where the Odd Fellows Cemetery is, where the mine fire originally started. And a lot of people think, well, a lot of people, let me say this, a lot of people didn't want to claim that it was their fault. It's believed that it was started over there. And then somebody said, oh, no, 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 it wasn't us. It was these guys. And then they said, oh, no, 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 it wasn't us either. It's those guys. But for all intents and purposes, for history, just on the other side of those trees, on the other side of this field, is where the Centralia mine fire began. With the church off in the distance overlooking Centralia, and I'm on the other side of the valley that the town once was in, I want to say thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time to the real life Silent Hill, Centralia, Pennsylvania. And as always, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. His daddy stays. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 